Hello my fellow garden gals and guys. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, Serenity Now Garden. My name's Jeannie and I garden in central Minnesota in a zone 4B. So today I'm gonna to be showing you a new garden bed I'm putting in. Um, it's a shade bed. As you may know, I just live adjacent to the wetlands here and we had a ton of buckthorn removed last year and I've slowly been extending my garden bed just further back, further back. Um, so I'm ready for the next phase here and I'll show you exactly what I got done and I'll kind of just take you around the garden a little bit show you a few updates on the cut flower and veggie garden and my side yard and also we have a still bees blooming we have delphinium that I managed to catch some footage of right before we had some severe weather so I'll show you that too and just a couple garden highlights here. So stay tuned for that and if you like videos like this, please consider subscribing to my channel or giving me a thumbs up. Thanks, happy gardening. Okay, garden friends, so first of all, right before I show you my new bed, let me just show you a couple clearance plants I got. Here is a rose salvia and here are some pink veronicas. I got these for $4 each. These were at Lowe's right here. And I got some garden flocks. I'm going to be putting on each side of this variegated flocks. I think these were $4 each. The variegated flocks is so pretty. Um, these ones that I picked up are just pink. They were mislabeled. That's why they were on clearance. I have a couple grasses back here that I got on clearance too. They'll look better next year. That's the thing about clearance plants. And I got some blue salvia or purple salvia right next to this glow girl spirea so pretty we have some daisy may daisies back here so pretty they've been blooming a while very happy with that plant that's proven winners and some bee balm that was from last year so I want to get this to spread back here it's a good pollinator plant and the new bed that i'm going to be putting in is right here this is the before. So it's mostly shady. I will be putting a few taller plants that it gets partial shade right here. I already have some plants in there, but you can't really see because there's no mulch down yet. I need to pull out some buckthorn seedlings. I'm going to be planting these here too. This is um, bee balm and meadow. Leatris or Meadow Blazing Star. I highly recommend this. This is so pretty. Here's a picture of what it looked like last year with the bumblebee on it. I got a few of these tall Dark Towers Penstemon for $5 each. I got four of them. So they're going to go just kind of just where the sun meets this bed here. Very pretty. They get a bit taller. So like I said, they'll be in the back here. There's already a few gold plants back here in a pagoda dogwood, but like I said, I, I just need to rip out a lot of the buckthorn seedlings and mulch. This is where I'll be putting the penstemon. I also found this candy apple Monrovia hydrangea. I got two of them for $8 each. They'll look like this. This is just the Monrovia's version of little lime hydrangeas. So it's like a compact lime light. I actually ended up putting this somewhere else. Um, but very good find them nonetheless. So this is after the sun is just coming up. So I hope you could see pretty good. Let me take you in this bed. So I removed a pearl bush right in front here and I relocated it in back. So I put a couple of the clearance plants up here. I have stackies and I have some Veronica. And this is also where I put that meadow blazing star and bee balm. So it was a very good change because I needed shorter plants up here. The pearl bush was just too tall. I got some viburnum already back here and some nine barks. This is where I relocated the pearl bush to. Now this will get six feet tall and it blooms white, blooms in spring. And look at how good this looks. So fully mulched, mulch just makes everything pop, but I put a couple gold plants back here around this pagoda dogwood, and I think they're going to do really good back here. So 
gold um, Hasta Dancing Queen, and we have the Sun King Aralias, which just are my favorite shade plant. They pop from a mile away. They'll get four by four. They do die to the ground. They're not shrubs. They are perennials. And we have a Sun Scorched Gold Lamium here. Um, I had to move it from another area. Do not put gold lamium in full sun. I tried it. It doesn't work. <laughs> but lesson learned. That's what gardening's all about. So I put these four um, Dark Towers Penstemon on the back of this bed. I didn't finish mulching. Need a few more bags of mulch. And I'll probably get this done and I'll show it in the next garden tour. And there you go. Let me show you a few more things here. These are the delphiniums up front right before it stormed. I went outside with my camera because I'm like, I just don't know what's going to happen here. Um, but they're gorgeous. There's two different varieties here. Up in front, the more lavender one is the Aurora Lavenders. Sometimes they grow a bit shorter, like this one here. Not fully opened yet, but... And in back, it's just more the uh, very tall, just... Uh, I'm not positive on the variety name, but it's the more common delphinium. I wish they were fully opened, but delphinium is just so gorgeous. If you can look at this, the blooms here, it's like blue on the outside and purple on the inside. It's just one of my favorite blooms. They're a bit more higher maintenance. You do have to stake them and, you know, in the... The weather, the wind, the rain, of course they can break or bend. I will show you a little bit of footage here of what they look like after the storm. So unfortunately, I lost almost all of the ones that were partially bloomed. I have all the ones that aren't open yet. So just in a day that happened, unfortunately. There's a bucket here of, oh, I think I lost a good six or seven spikes there, but you can make some flower arrangements with them. Let me take you on my side yard here. So this is what the end of June in zone four looks like for some of these plants. The Jackmanii clematis is still going really strong. It's already bloomed for over a week now and it's just very vigorous. This is only the third season. I also have a Ville de Leon clematis here. It's not as vigorous, but very pretty. Let me take you down the side yard now. This side yard is only three years old. It's only about uh, 10 to 15 feet wide. We decided to put a little winding path through here and just line it with various plants. I got some variegated irises here and look at this Atlantis sedum and excuse the weeds. <laughs> Very pretty. I just love that foliage. I have some scabiosa and some um, some other plants around there. This one is a coneflower Cheyenne spirit. First year I got this for like four bucks on clearance. So it's right in front of this ginkgo jade butterfly. So pretty. I also have these blue juniper junipers that I put in blue arrow junipers. So those should get a couple feet wide and they can get up to 15 feet tall actually. If you look just behind this, this is an awesome plant. This is Roseanne geranium. It's a workhorse in the garden. It might not be a huge showstopper, but this will bloom from end of spring all the way to frost. And we got some firelight hydrangeas. These are just starting to bud up. These will get eight by eight. So I put it here for privacy. We have some yarrow in front of that. Now these look like they're going to be white, but when they bloom, they turn this magenta color. However, keep those sprayed because deer or rabbits or something gets to the blooms. And this is what gold lamium is supposed to look like when it's in the right conditions. Very pretty. It'll spread a bit here. And I kind of just repeated this pattern on the other side. So more blue junipers, more yarrow. I have nanny berries just behind that that should fill in about 8 to 10 feet tall and wide, hopefully, for a little more privacy. These, um, they bloom white in spring. Here's some... Sweet Kate Tritoscanthia or Spiderwort. Very pretty. I love the gold and the purple together. And this is just a new hosta bed I put in. I'll do a hosta tour 
in a couple weeks. I just want them to fill in a bit more before I do that. But I'll kind of go, if you're a hosta lover, keep watching. In a few weeks, that'll be out. Let me go back up the path here. Mostly of alpine and rock garden plants on the left. A lot of sedums. There's some blue forbia donkey tails. And then there's some night ember sedum back there that will get like fuchsia blooms on it. So pretty. Got this saxifraga that I'm going to put in. Some dwarf evergreens. More euphorbia and a little blue mouse ears hosta, miniature hosta back here. Just next to it is blue sedum that is flowering yellow. It is so pretty. Further along here, the Himalayan sky sedum is blooming white. Very pretty. We got another mouse ears hosta. And the yellow you're seeing is scotch moss. We have a selene that's blooming. We have some sedums in the back that will bloom in August. And they're gorgeous when they bloom. And we just got some sempervivums here. Various colors and a snowflake selene in the front. This has been a really fun project. So I just love my rock garden plants. Let me take you to the back again. I have to show you some astobies that are just blooming. Now I have various varieties of astobe and they start blooming one at a time. So the first ones are just blooming now. We have a few more hosta. That's Montana right there. So pretty. Okay, check out this astobe. They puff up this, and I don't know the variety of this one. I'm sorry, but they puff up this um, like hot pink color. It is so gorgeous and so eye-catching. We have another one here. The one on the left isn't blooming yet, but isn't this gorgeous how it puffs up like this? I wish they lasted longer. I think once they start blooming like this, it lasts about two weeks. But very pretty. Got a couple different colors, a couple different heights, just a bunch of different varieties in here. Looks good next to the hostas too. We have a sombrero cone flower there. And this is a new firelight hydrangea. So this will bloom, oh, in a few weeks. Looks really good next to that blue halcyon hosta. And this is Dark Side of the Moon is still be. I got this as a clearance plant for like $4. So I'm not sure if it's going to look really good this year. But next year it should look good. But very good contrast next to all these colors with the foliage. This is my favorite right here. Mighty Pip is still be. This is a good four and a half feet tall. It isn't blooming yet. So this is just what it looks like before it blooms. I'll share it again. It should be open another week, week and a half, I'd say. But if you're looking for a tall a still be, Mighty Pip is the way to go. A few more varieties back here. They look so good next to the contrast of the Sun King Aralias. This is one of my favorite beds back here. It's so like lush. We have another tall one over here. I'm not positive of the variety. They love water. This is a First Lady Veronica. Just starting to bloom. More hosta. This is my latest blooming astobe. Maybe in three more weeks it'll bloom, but it'll be like a bright red. Looks great next to that Sun King. And in the very, very back, we actually have some native elderberry that grow wild here. So we kind of want that to just take over that chain link fence if possible. So these bloom white in the spring and they'll be followed by purple berries. And they are edible. Birds love them. So that's a great, you know, native here in the wetlands. And yeah, it, it's just flourished now that we took, took out the uh, invasive buckthorn. Moving on to the other side of the bed here, we have various spireas, more delphinium, 
The Delphinium here is a shorter variety. It didn't really make it. <laughs> There's also a taller variety that isn't bloomed yet that I have staked up. Now, these stakes don't look great. But once these are bloomed, you don't even notice those green stakes. So it's worth it. I've tried various methods. This is the best method, method for me. It keeps them for longer. We have some royal candles, Veronica. This is my earliest blooming Veronica here. Very prolific. Very happy with this plant. It's only second year, and I got these really small. There's three plants here. And let me just give you a quick cut flower and veggie garden update. So this is where we put off our dead leaves every year. I have four rows of zinnias here. Once they get bigger, I'll give you a closer update. We have some amaranth. Love's li Love lies bleeding amaranth here. A couple things that the deer got to, cucumbers and kohlrabi. I have two tomato plants. On the right is a celebrity, which is a hybrid. It's disease resistant. And on the left is an heirloom. Got a couple tomatoes on the vine. Very exciting. This is an indeterminate variety here, this heirloom tomato. Once we get further along, I'll share some more updates with you. We got some gourds and summer squash there. And last but not least, we have um, some red bell pepper. So I hope you like that, guys. Happy gardening, and see you next time.